Smackers. <laughs> yeah, I got a noogie in the footy. Noogie in the footy. No, noogie in the footy. As you may have noticed, we're still in Blythe. Yep, so we're, yep. <laughs> yep, so, uh, yep, so, uh, <laughs> yep, so our plans were to leave on Friday, head into Arizona, we were gonna check out Phoenix, we've been in the desert for two months, and we were kind of excited to get out of here and get back into the routine of hiking and exploring and the whole that cool stuff. Well, Mother Nature had other plans. Big rain and snow had been decided to come in and swamp all of the Southwest. So we decided to stay put another week. Which for us is not a big deal because we are kind of the fly by your seat of your pants uh, type and not really making long-term commitments. Basically, we're just too flighty. Um, very short attention spans. Butterfly. So for us, this makes living on the road less stressful when we don't have commitments or timetables where we have to worry about being at a certain place at a certain time. It's easier for us just to choose our own schedule, go with the flow, and then kind of just go where the wind blows us. Which, by the way, is great when you pretty much primarily boondock. We boondock mostly because we enjoy the peace and quiet and, well, it's free. But one of the main things you have to give up when you're boondocking is amenities. Besides giving up things like water, uh, one of the big things you give up when you're boondocking is power. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about our solar system and how it powers our off-grid lives. Brandy left. So before we get into the whole deal about solar, before we get up on the roof, let's do a quick primer on how solar works. You have the sun here, cool guy with the glasses. And it's, it's the sun, and it's giving all pew, 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 down to the battery bank. And here's all your batteries. Then you plug your stuff in, and then you got power. So you have your solar panels. Your solar panels are sitting on the roof. They gather all the energy that's coming from the sun. Your solar panels send that energy down to something called a charge controller. The charge controller regulates that voltage sends that power into your battery bank. Now your battery bank stores all of your power for your rig and this is where you're gonna draw your power from. To the battery bank is connected is your inverter. When you plug things into the wall, that's called 120 volt electricity. When you plug things into, maybe your rig comes with those USB plugs, that's 12 volt. So your battery bank stores the power in 12 volt, but you need to convert that power into 120 volt and this is where the inverter comes in. The inverter plays other roles, things like charging your batteries, we'll get into that later. But for now, all you need to know is that the inverter transforms the power from 12 volt DC to 120 volt AC, which allows you to power your devices. Let's go up to the roof. Behind me, a 780 watt solar array. These panels were built by a company called Merlin Solar. Now they started making panels for boats, but then recently moved over into the RV world. These panels are truly next generation technology. So traditional solar panels have a bus bar where all the electrical connections are made. These solar panels have a proprietary grid of interconnects. So you get a 20% boost in efficiency from these panels versus traditional solar panels. So efficiency inside, the durability of these panels is what really sold me. They're so durable, in fact, that I'm actually standing on them. If you're from Colorado, you would know that the hail is no joke. We used to actually cover our old panels on our, on our burst rig with those yellow leveling blocks, foam, whatever we could find to try to prevent them from breaking. <laughs> Probably overkill, definitely overkill, but at least this rig and these panels, something with like hail, we just don't ever have to worry about. Another benefit for these panels uh, for the RVer is because of its proprietary grid of interconnects and the way it gathers light, small things like casting shadows on a single, pa single panel isn't gonna knock out the whole panel. Okay, so the disadvantages. Uh, probably the biggest disadvantage is, is they don't tilt. Now in the winter, that's kind of a requirement. In the winter, the sun doesn't get very high up in the air. So you really need to kind of tilt your panels to point them at a 90 degree angle to the sun. These panels don't tilt, so we lose a little bit of energy in the winter. Or in other words, it takes a lot longer for our batteries to be charged. So bottom line is, if you want the best of the best, you're looking at it. 
but it's gonna cost you. Traditional panels will cost you about a dollar a watt. The panels that we got on our first rig were giant residential panels, and we got those for 65 cents a watt. These panels, $4 a watt. So 780 watts, that's a little over $3,000 in panels. All right, so now that we've seen the upstairs, we've seen the solar on the roof, let's go back down and see where it all comes together in the charge controller. We were up on the roof talking about the charge controller, and now we are back inside the rig. So the wires from all the solar panels up top come in through the roof vent, down through the roof, down through the refrigerator chute where the refrigerator vents off, and then it exits at the bottom of the refrigerator. It's also coincidentally where the AC panel is for the main rig. So we're gonna take a look at that, but first we gotta get this out. That was a real pain. So we got the drawer off. Let's take a look at what we got. What we're looking at here is a charge controller by Victron. Victron has been making components for quite a long time and they're probably the number one preferred component manufacturer for RV solar components. Now this charge controller specifically was pretty pricey, uppers of about $1,000. Do you need one this big? Well, that all kind of depends on how big your solar array is. We currently have 780 watts, produces about 100 volts. So we needed something that would have more than enough room, especially to grow in the future. From the solar charge controller, all of the wires are gonna be connected to the battery bank. But before we get into that, let's go over the side here. We're gonna go into our RV's electrical box. And a lot of what was, a lot of what we see here has been upgraded. So we previously had a lot of 15 amp circuit breakers, but the problem that we were having was uh, you would plug one or two things in and it would trip the breaker. And it turns out that there was just too much on one run. Brazen rewired everything here, replaced all the 15 amps with 20 amp uh, circuit breakers, which allows us to run things normally. And ever since him putting all this stuff in, we haven't had a single issue. All right, so we've covered the solar panels coming from the roof. They come down the refrigerator vent into the bottom of the refrigerator and still is throwing up. Go. Into the bottom of the refrigerator where it meets the charge controller. And now that power is gonna be sent across to our battery bank to charge the batteries. Most class CRVs come with two house batteries, but we relocated our entire battery bank because we obviously need more than two batteries. So before we jump to the batteries, I wanted to quickly go over what this thing down here is called. This is called a sub panel. You really don't want all of your power going through your inverter, or rather you don't want your inverter powering everything in your coach. Uh, there are some things that you cannot realistically power. For us anyways, this includes the air conditioner. We just don't have enough roof space to fit the amount of panels that would be required nor do we have the amount of capacity to for the batteries that it would take to power an AC. Anything that is powered by the inverter or anything that is connected to draws power from the inverter has to go through the sub panel first. So this includes the outlets, the things like the microwave and the refrigerator. All of this is powered on electrical. Now the refrigerator is a dual propane and electric, uh, and we mostly run this on propane, but we have the option of running on this on electric, and we sometimes do when we're bringing more than enough energy in from the panels above. Now on to the batteries. This is where all the magic comes together. This is our battery bank, 672 amp hours. So each of these are six volt golf cart batteries. Now you could just put three 12 volt car batteries, but you wouldn't get as much bang for your buck. So those car batteries are about 100 amp hours each. Each of these will give you a total of 224 amp hours versus 100 amp hours from a normal car battery. So next to the six volt batteries, we have our inverter. Now this is kind of the brain of the entire operation. The inverter is responsible for, like I said earlier, taking that DC power, converting it to 120 volt AC, and powering the plugs and everything else like that in the rig. So this inverter is a 3000 watt inverter. This size allows us to do things like run the microwave and the coffee pot together. Did it just get in focus? Or did my eyes go back to normal? Maybe it's the light that's... Hmm. It's in focus to me. So this 3000 watt inverter allows us to power several things at once. Like for example, the microwave and the coffee pot or the microwave and the toaster. 
so an inverter this size allows us to pretty much power everything we want except for the AC. But it comes at a cost. This 3000 watt inverter is a little over $2,000. Each of these six volt batteries costs about $275. So we have six of them, which is uh, roughly $1,600 in batteries. So you might be asking yourself, well, why not lithium? Well, we would have only been able to get 1.6 lithium batteries for that cost. Lithium ion batteries are still really expensive, $1,000 for 100 amp hours. So in order to really get a lithium ion equivalent, we would really have to get 600 amp hours of lithium. Well, not really. So your 50% depth of discharge rule on AGM and lead acid batteries means you really can't drain these more than 300 or so amp hours uh, to keep your batteries in good working order long term. So you would have to spend, if you want to figure in depth of discharge, $3,000 in lithium ion versus $1,650 for these batteries. These AGMs, if well maintained, will last a decade. Also, if we were to go lithium ion, we would also need other parts. Since we have a motorhome, we would need a special battery isolator, something. We would also have to set custom profiles on the inverter. So there's a bit more work and a little bit more cost when it comes to switching everything over to lithium ion. So cost, this is the big thing. We have our bill here from the last solar install. And I don't know if you could probably see this or not, but uh, $11,475.72. Which, when you think about it, is not a lot of money, especially considering you're paying $500 to $1,000 a month for RV parks. So to break this down, uh, there were 24 hours of labor. So it took them three days to do the solar install, and a lot of that had to do with rewiring, as I spoke about earlier when we were checking out the charge controller. Uh, and so these people charge $165 an hour, which is pretty expensive. Usually you'll find them for about $100 an hour, but... Um, we wanted to go and have this thing done once. We wanted it done right. So 24 hours labor, $165 an hour. That's $3,960 on labor. So uh, what is that? Math breaks down to basically $6,400 in parts and supplies. Final thoughts on solar. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially if you primarily boondock. Now, if you are not a exclusive boondocker and you're Mostly at campground, it's probably not the type of system for you, but um, I think it's definitely worth mm -hmm. it. Um, another thing to keep in mind is definitely have a professional do it. Uh, this is something I don't think you should be cavalier with. This is electricity. Just stick to what we know, RVing stuff, and uh, we'll let the professionals do the work. If you have any questions or comments, or if you want to know anything about the solar, let us know. Leave a comment below. And we will get back to you. We will reply to your comments with words. <laughs> Yay, solar. Yay, solar.